Joining us now on the drop, Charlie McAvoy, Boston Bruins defenseman and official NFL playoff prognosticator for this postseason. Charlie, you went seven and five. That's not bad. It's not bad at all. You took some chances. They didn't work out. But seven and five is nothing to sneeze at. Oh, we're plus money. Uh, <laughs> seven and five. Um, nah, I, lo I love football. Football is always my uh, my favorite sport besides hockey. I played it for as long as I could. And uh, you know, I love watching college football. I love NFL. It, uh, it coincides with our, with our season. So, yeah, I don't think there's any better time of the year than that late August, September, when you're when you're getting ready for you know for football hockey season. Now, when you say you played it, did you play it like in school growing up, or were you just messing around with kids in your neighborhood like I did? No, I played it. I played Pop Warner, and then uh, I played up until seventh grade. So when I had to go out for like the middle school team, that was kind of when it was just too much. Like we had games every weekend for hockey all through the fall, so you're missing those games anyway. And, um, you know, practice doesn't, doesn't coincide with it either. So <laughs> the coach was always like, I played lacrosse the longest, honestly. And it would, it would always be kind of funny like, because those, they don't really understand. I'd be like, oh, man, I'm, I, I'm, I think I'm good at this hockey thing. I don't want to miss hockey, but like, if you miss their sport. So if you would miss like lacrosse practice, he'd be like, you're, you're not playing this weekend. He'd be right. like, Right. So you can never have the best of both worlds, but I wish I could have had that with football a little while longer because uh, I loved it. So there was never a point in the multiverse where you could have been Mark Bavaro, right? Like you were always going to be better at hockey, right? I I would imagine I was never going to be Mark Bavaro. <laughs> my dad actually, we went. I went to a Giants game with my dad, and he actually I bought him a Mark Bavaro jersey. Is that so right? Player. Yeah. <laughs> When we went, we went to their opener versus the Broncos like three years ago, four years ago, and I got him a Bavaro jersey. So he loved it. No, I yeah. wish I could have played longer because you never know. Like, I gave up on it too early, but I don't think that I would have uh, – I don't know. I don't know I if know. I had the intangibles to be a football player, but I played – I was big as a kid and played like running back and linebacker. So. Nice. Well, we, yeah. you and I have talked before about how you had a happier upbringing because I'm a Jets fan and you're a Giants fan. So – we don't have to go there again. Uh, Super Bowl 58 is upon us. The Kansas City Chiefs meet the San Francisco 49ers in Las Vegas. Let's not keep the people waiting, Charlie. What is your official Super Bowl pick for this year's big game? Yeah, I've tried to uh, try to get as, as many views as I can on both sides. Obviously, sometimes we're playing. Um, but I don't understand how you could go against Mahomes in this situation. And I really don't understand how they're underdogs, to be honest. He's just been there too many times. The record is, the record's wild. Like, I think I took them to lose in the divisional. And it's like the guy, the guy's seven and oh in the divisional. Like you just, he's a shoe in for the conference championship every single year. So I don't know why I was thinking that. And now I'm just going to, let the let the numbers work for me. So I don't know. I think it's it's really hard to go against the Chiefs here, and their defense is probably the best they've had, even better than last year. So I don't know. And then you look at the Niners. Yeah, I don't know. I looked at the Niners, and I'm like, they tried every way to lose <laughs> their playoff games, and they yeah. somehow got through. Now I don't know if that that's obviously a good test, is like you know their their metal and. But so maybe now they flip the switch and now they're just going to like run Kansas City out. But I don't know. I, you're going to have to show it to me. You're going to have to give me Mahomes and uh, on Super Bowl Sunday. I'm with, I'm with you. I'm on the Chiefs. Like give Andy Reid and his coaching staff that amount of time to figure out how to torture Brock Purdy. Like they're going to be able to figure it out. Like McCaffrey's going to get his. He's like minus 260 score touchdown. He's going to get his. Yeah. But like if they give the Chiefs time to figure out how to torture Brock Purdy they're going to torture Brock Purdy oh and by the way their offense is playing really well too right now with you know Mahomes Pacheco everything so I'm I mean we might both look dumb at the end of the day it might be Brock Purdy telling us all how excited he is to go to Disneyland at the end of the Super Bowl but I, I, I I'm with you like the idea of the Chiefs being an underdog in a game like this is mind-boggling so I'm with you on the team. Uh, you're, yeah, you're going to have to show it to me. Like, they had to go the hard way, so they went into Baltimore, they went into Buffalo, and they yeah. won both those games. Into with their Buffalo. Defense, into exactly. Buffalo. And then into Baltimore, freezing. And, like, 
that's the same Baltimore team that put up 35 on on San Fran in in San Fran. Like I know those games don't really, you know, you like to play that game a little bit, but like right. they went and they went and won that game with their defense. So I don't know. I just I, I like <laughs> give me Mahomes as an underdog in the Super Bowl, and it, it feels like it feels like a gift. There you go. McAvoy, Wyshynski, both in the Chiefs. We're throwing Taylor Swift friendship bracelets at each other. We're very excited. <laughs> we're both we're both on the Chiefs. What do you think about think Swift it. and Kelsey, by the way, the whole the whole thing with there? Uh I think it's pretty cool. We were joking about it the other day because obviously, like, you know, my, my wife loves Taylor Swift and you know, I'm I'm not ashamed to say I, I, I listen to Taylor Swift too. Uh Me too. yeah, you know, she's she's an icon. Um I just was saying, I'm like, man, she couldn't, she couldn't have dated a hockey player. Someone was saying the <laughs> revenue, someone was saying the revenue of, uh, you know, what she's brought to the NFL. Um, and obviously she's helped her own brand along the way, but I was like, man, like we couldn't have gotten like, we couldn't have gotten like Jack Hughes or somebody to, to slide into her DMs. I don't know. Um, it would no, have our, been cool, our ceiling not, is, there's, there's our, our ceiling is Hillary Duff. I think that was our, our ceiling is Hillary Duff, Hillary yeah. Duff and Mike Fisher. Yep. <laughs> Oh, that's right. No, you're right. Hillary oh, Duff no, was with Comrie. Carrie was Underwood Comrie and Mike Fisher. Fisher was, you're right. Yeah. Underwood's okay, our ceiling. Okay. She's more famous than, than Hillary Duff. You're right. Yes, Good point, Charlie. Yes. Good point. All right. You're a USA hockey guy. Big international hockey news at the NHL All-Star Game. Let's start with the Four Nations face-off with the U.S., Canada, Sweden, Finland. What were your thoughts on that tournament for next season? Yeah, I thought it was really cool. Um just really exciting, uh, you know, at the prospect of playing, you know, some hockey for Team USA again. Um, you know, it's been a little bit. Uh, some of the best memories I've had in, in hockey, and and it's always an honor uh, to do so. I've had the dream of being an Olympian since, you know, since the first time I ever watched it, and then 2010 when they almost won the gold medal. Um, you know, I remember that. I remember sitting on the couch watching that with my family and how special that tournament was to – to view and then to you know uh, to internalize that and be like man that's where I want to be so to have the opportunity to do it I know we thought we had it last go around and that was equally as exciting and then kind of equally as disappointing when it got pulled but um you know hopefully there's there's no un unforeseen stuff that could uh you know that could throw a wrench in this and we get to see it through and and you know hopefully as long as I do everything I can I'll be able to, to play on that team yeah, and people don't understand how close it came with Beijing. Like you told me, you had to submit your measurements for your Ralph Lauren like opening ceremonies or closing ceremonies gear, right? Yeah, it was ever they. You know, you could see all the names that are on the list, and we had we had gone as far as having you know like a a long. They make a long list, right? Um, you know, and then that we we got on a Zoom call and. And that was with the coaching staff and the general manager. So you have all these guys that are in the player pool, um, you know, with the prospect of making the team. And, um, you know, you have to give, you know, sort of home addresses. And I think there's, you know, they can come and drug test you and stuff like that, like WADA. And then you go through, you know, your measurements for stuff like that. You're kind of filling out like this, this pre pre games application. And we made it all the way into the season, into the winter time. So we were getting kind of close to February. And then I think they called it, I don't know, month, month and a half before two months. Ago. Yeah. So yeah. When all those outbreaks happened and it would have, you know, would have been hard, but yeah, it was, uh, you know, it was cool. Cause you're, you're doing all these things and you're getting excited about it. Just hoping, you know, just as long as my play can, can, uh, you know, can stay well and get a chance to go, but, um, but it'll be equally, uh, you know, as exciting this time around if we get to, uh, if we get to do it and obviously I hope, I hope we will. And then the four nations too, yeah. um, Boston and Montreal too, two of the best cities I think in, in the league for, for hockey. Um, you know, obviously if I get to play in that, uh, a little bit of home ice for me would be, <laughs> would be awesome. Um, having, you know, li living here in Boston year round. So, uh, I know it's only four teams and I understand what its placeholder is. And Apostle was kind of upset. Um, you know, because the Czechs have a have a great hockey country. Yeah. Uh, but as I understood it, it was sort of just like what they put together in the short time, and then it'll it'll be a you know a first step towards World Cup of Hockey again, where everybody will be able to play. Yep, exactly. And then obviously they announced at the All Star Game, like you said, 2026, 2030 Olympics for the NHL players. 
All right, here's your chance. I'm giving you the platform. Please tell myself and the rest of the patriotic Americans watching the drop that we're finally going to beat Canada and win gold in one of these tournaments, Charlie McAvoy. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not going to throw that on the on the bulletin board right now, but <laughs> I, I've had these I've had these conversations, and uh, you know, because because 2010, I guess 2014 was the last one. So I was at that there point, for that. I, I was, was there in 2010 yeah. too. Crushing. crushing. Okay, yeah, crushing. Yeah, yeah. So. I remember looking at those teams and I remember thinking, you know, wow, it'd be really cool to, to see if they can go far in these tournaments. And, you know, in the conversations that I've had, you know, recently with, with, with just with the player pool and with the talent that USA hockey has, and you look around and there's stars all over the league um, that are American at, at every single position. Um, so I think that kind of, changes now i think it's you know instead of being like oh i wonder how far they could go it, it looks like hey you know why not us to to go and, and go over there and and make some real noise and, and their usa hockey wanna... group chat no, <laughs> <laughs> no i have, a lot, of, I have a lot of guys from my my ntdp team and stuff a lot of them you know a lot of them were at the wedding and okay and uh you know, we stay close. We've had some amazing experiences, whether it be World Juniors or, or U18s and stuff. You know, those things kind of kind of give you a, a really special bond. Um, so I, I it would be it would be really unique, and and obviously some of the names are are the same to think about if we got a chance to go and play this. Uh, it would be sort of a, a reunion. Yeah, it'd be awesome. Finally, uh, the Bruins have been one of the best stories of the season so far. You know, pressing for the President's Trophy again after losing some key players after last season and suffering that devastating loss in the playoffs in the first round. Has this season been a surprise for you at all? Or did you, were you confident that the Bruins still had this kind of season in them? I thought you rely upon the culture, I guess. And that is, and that's a winning culture, um, you know, sort of doing, doing all the things you need to do in order to win. But I was definitely surprised. Uh, I'll, I'll say it you know, for <laughs> won't hide it. I was, you know, we lost a lot of guys and I think maybe it was the outside noise that kind of, you know, sort of, and, and I, I think I embraced sort of an underdog role this year. And I think our team did as well. And as we started stringing together our, our identity and, and winning more and more hockey games, um, I was kind of like, you know, how, <laughs> a little bit of how are we doing this? And then, then it sort of clicked like, okay, you know, this, this isn't luck. This isn't pot, like we're, we're a really good hockey team. Again, are we built like last year? No, not at all. We're more of a put it in deep team now versus line rush. We're more of a wear you out behind the net than we are, you know, sort of cycle and making skill, skill plays high. Um, we're doing it a completely different way this year, but you know, when I look back on it now, I will say like, you know, the goalie stayed the same, the defense stayed the same. We got, a, we got new guys up front. Um, but at those two pillars were, you know, they, we, we got better in those two areas. Um, not, not much changed, you know, there was, there was familiarity with our structure yeah. and stuff like that. So, uh, it worked out really well. And then our forwards, you know, have been getting better and better every, you know, every game this year. Pleasant surprise indeed. All right. <clears throat> you heard it folks. Charlie McAvoy's on the chiefs. He's plus money. Run, run to where we run to and, and, and take that knowledge with you, Charlie. You're the best. Thanks for taking time with us today on the drop. We appreciate it. Thank you guys. Go Chiefs. <laughs>